Hello, everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Angel Storm. I am picking up today with a topic that I did a couple weeks ago uh, on can narcissistic abuse kill me? And this question actually really, um, you know, struck my heart, so to speak, because I I realize how many people don't even realize they are really wasting away physically in an abusive relationship. And so I want to expound upon that question. And I kind of did more of an overview of the ways in which narcissistic abuse really wears on you, including physically, uh, to, to ultimately kill you. It will kill your body. It will definitely kill your soul. And as I explained in that video, it's really you know, a thousand small deaths that you die on the way. And today I want to talk about common uh, issues that you will experience in your physical body because this is one of the things that can start alerting you to the seriousness of the situation that you're in is by seeing your physical health deteriorate. So uh, I want to focus on that and then I want to give you some ideas of what you can do with this information. So um, first of all, I started off by asking the people who are in my narcissistic detox intensive, how many of them have ever felt like this abuse is going to kill me? And every single person answered that's how they felt, that every single one of them has experienced being in a place of not only is this going to kill me, but in some ways wishing that it would. Like they've just had so, so much abuse and they can't take anymore and they don't know how to escape by filing things with the court or how to get a, a new place to live or how to file for divorce or win custody of their kids. And so the way out to them is simply by praying that you know, they leave this earth and that this life ends. And that is heartbreaking to me. However, I also remember feeling that way. And I have done a couple of videos on this exact topic. You know, for me personally, I would wake up angry that I was still here and, and not like pouting, but like genuinely upset that my prayer didn't get answered. And when I think about this and when I think about, uh, you know, the life that I have now and what a transformation this is, it is the exact experience that I not only want my clients to have, but I want everybody under the sound of my voice to know that that's not only possible, that is plausible for you and for your situation. One of the ladies who's in my detox intensive um, shared a story about how prior to joining the intensive, she had heart palpitations so badly, her heart, her physical heart was hurting so badly that she would go into the ER. She kept going to the ER uh, many times for years. And the doctors kept telling her, you you are not having a heart attack because she was convinced she was. And they said, this is because of panic and anxiety and you need to essentially heal your inner world. There's nothing physically wrong with you. Um, and I'm happy to say that through the intensive, she was able to get a handle on that, and it has not happened to her in many months since she has joined uh, the intensive. So what I, what I ultimately want you to know is that there is healing for every single one of these issues. Okay, so to get started, let's talk about some of the things that can be happening physically to you that are should be warning signs to you that your body is trying to tell you, I'm rejecting this environment. I do not feel safe in this environment. I cannot possibly grow and be healthy in this environment. And in fact, I'm shutting down and I need urgent attention. Okay. So the first one is kind of obvious, but that's insomnia or sleep disturbances. And a lot of people uh, can't sleep because 
um, either of, of something that's bothered them during the day. But a lot of people are afraid to actually go to sleep because they don't know what's going to happen when they go to sleep, especially if you are in a physically abusive or sexually abusive situation. Please understand that is not an okay situation for you to stay in. Please utilize the resources that are in the description of this video for starters to get help and to get out of that situation. Lack of sleep, you know, some some scientists believe that sleep is the number one indicator of of not only your overall health right now, but ultimately your longevity and how healthy you're going to be as as you continue to age. And so understand that this cannot be overlooked and that if something is interfering in your sleep in any realm of your life, it's really important that you get that looked at and you get a handle on it. You get a plan together on how you're going to overcome that problem. The second thing that can happen is digestive problems. This is very common. Irritable bowel syndrome, they say your gut is your is your second brain because of how many nerve endings, how many neurological endings are in your gut. So if you're experiencing digestive issues, sometimes that's not because you're allergic to a certain food, although you can absolutely develop allergies or allergy-like symptoms to different foods. That's actually just a, a, a protective response to a situation. Headaches and migraines are also very common. Muscle tension and pain, the inability to relax overall. High blood pressure is another one. Um, in my intensive, I make a point of showing people how your body works and how your body, soul, and spirit are really one unit and how they operate together as one unit. And I have a whole section that covers what goes on with your heart when your physical heart and the effects that that can have on your heart and all other heart-related issues physically when you hold on to things such as unforgiveness, when you do not know how to advocate for yourself, when you do not feel uh, safe in your own body, in your own skin, in your own environment. And this is something that will immediately be affected is your blood pressure. And of course, that's going to cause a whole host of second and tertiary uh, diseases. The next thing is obviously a weakened immune system, which I also touched on in my previous video on this topic. Um, any type of stress cortisol being released into your body, especially an overload of it, will weaken your immune system. And so just germs that you come into contact with every day, which are normally no big deal, they will all of a sudden become a big deal. Weight loss or weight gain, the inability for... Uh, for you to maintain or regulate your weight, that is actually an indication that something is off with your hormones, which again happens very frequently in this situation because there isn't a way to kind of get into a regular routine and make sure that things are happening on a consistent basis. The constant chaos is causing constant chaos internally to you as well, which manifests itself in your body. Uh, skin problems such as acne, rashes. This also goes into hair problems. Um, losing your hair is very common with, um, with narcissistic abuse. It's um, a form of shock. When your body experiences shock, it, it just releases the things that it does not uh, need you know, for survival anymore. Um, and you'll start seeing this manifest in, again, almost um, allergy-like symptoms with rashes, with acne. It'll look like something else like eczema or something like that. So be aware of any kind of new skin problems. Chronic fatigue. This is not just being tired in your body and like I had a really hard day at work or I did a really hard workout. This is where your mind is also very tired. Your brain is tired you know, something that's interesting about the way that cortisol works in our body, which again is your stress hor hormone, um, in most people who are experiencing narcissistic abuse, they typically have three times the level that would be considered high. So, you know, you have your range of things and even on the high end of what cortisol is, people who are experiencing consistent narcissistic abuse 
are, are having three times the high end of that. Meaning if you were to develop, if you were to spread that same amount of cortisol over three people, all three people would still have high levels of cortisol. That's how much stress hormone is going inside of your body every day. One of the things that cortisol does to your brain is it affects your hippocampus and your hippocampus is an area inside of your brain that is responsible for your short-term memory and your decision-making ability. And both of those things are significantly hindered because of this constant uh, rush of cortisol, which is meant to flood your body in types of situations where you are facing real life-threatening um, situations so that you have enough energy to get out of that situation and that you can act on instinct in order to flee that situation. Again, when you are constantly being drugged with this type of, uh, of hormone flooding your brain, you literally cannot make decisions. That's why it's so important to come up with predetermined choices, which is a key pillar of how I run my narcissistic detox intensive. I want you to be able to know what is best for you even when you literally cannot think. As I mentioned before, hormone imbalances that affect your weight, also uh, hormones affect every single aspect of your body and they affect the functioning of all of your organs. And so hormonal imbalances will be the root cause of many other issues. You will typically experience the other issues before you realize that your hormones are off. And again, this is because your body cannot produce the correct level for you when you are in such a stressful situation and your body literally feels like you are in a fight, flight, freeze, or fawn mode all the time. Another aspect of manifesting narcissistic abuse in your physical body is sexual dysfunction. It can be very difficult for you to be intimate sexually in any way or even feel like you desire sexual intimacy with somebody when you are in, again, that constant fight, flight, freeze, fawn mode. It's important to know that you're a whole being. And loss of one part of who you are is, is a loss that needs to be acknowledged. So you might say, yeah, but I don't care if I don't have a sex drive or if I don't want to have sex with my partner, but that's a loss of who you are and you were not created that way. Everything was meant to function in balance, in harmony with things. And so it, I, I urge you to pay attention to the fact that if you're saying to yourself, I don't need that, you know, I don't care if that's gone, to maybe change your mind on, on the way that you're looking at that because in a normal, healthy, and loving relationship, this desire is not only normal, it's natural. It's something that you are supposed to experience. And so I don't want you to just write off part of your life simply because it serves you in this moment. We talked about your loss of immune system, but also that goes to the increased susceptibility to infections. So your body is going to take a lot longer to heal whether you get a paper cut or you have internal bleeding. Your body is not able to heal itself normally and naturally the way that it was created when you are in such a state of chaos internally. And I'm going to get to the enhanced exacerbation of pre-existing health conditions in just a moment, but if you already have autoimmune issues or you are trying to overcome some sort of chronic illness, it is really important that you understand the effect that that environment that you're in is having on your health. It's not only not helping you heal, it is actually making you worse, and again, this atmosphere is killing you. Respiratory problems are actually very common as well. Uh, increased levels of asthma, of feeling like there's, there's, you can't catch your breath, things like pneumonia, anything having to do with your lungs, your respiratory system is because your body cannot clear out the germs, the mucus, the things that are normal for your body to encounter and to normally just flush out of your system, it cannot do that because it is concentrated on just trying to keep you alive. Once again, autoimmune disorders, you can actually go into a narcissistic relationship without that. 
I've said this before, your words create your world, right? Your words are everything. And in fact, that's why they call it spelling. So many of you are underneath a spell of the narcissist. You are listening to the things that the narcissist says about you, that you're ugly and I hate you and you can't do anything right and you're nothing without me. And all of the things that the narcissist is saying about you, you're actually sitting in that environment, okay? In your, your body is actually sitting in that environment, is taking those words and is turning them into something, which is then creating your inner world. When you have a loss of your identity, your worth, your body is going to follow suit. Oh, you want me to produce things that make you feel ugly, make you look ugly, make you feel worthless? I'll do that. Your mind is so incredibly powerful. And when you don't understand the spiritual aspect of what you're dealing with with a narcissist, it's like your body has one less shield. And that shield would be very effective in these types of situations because you don't know how to combat those words and you listen to it long enough, you start believing it and it will start manifesting in your body. Chronic pain conditions like fibromyalgia, also very common. Again, your body will just start turning on itself because of the environment. You know, your environment will produce replications of that environment. If you grew up in a very peaceful home, if you grew up in a, a home that knew how to communicate with one another, you're not, that's going to be your normal. That's going to be your standard. You're going to replicate that in your own home when you grow up to have children. The same thing is true of what you're facing. You might try to shield your children or shield part of your life from what's going on with a narcissist, but the truth of the matter is that your body is in that situation all of the time and it's going to reproduce the environment that you're in internally as well. Dental issues, this is something that I think a lot of people overlook, but teeth grinding is not normal. That's a sign of extreme stress and also very common for people who are uh, in a narcissistic relationship. Of course, your teeth are bones, they are living, and uh, the, the fragility of them, the ability for you to get cavities or have infections in your gums, in your teeth, uh, is also just way more common because, again, your immune system is down. But teeth grinding, this, almost every single one of my clients has, uh, has had this happen, where if, if they do get to sleep, they wake up and they're sore all over, um, mostly because they were clenching their body tightly with, of course, this is all non-conscious and they were also grinding their teeth. And again, the point of this video is for me to point out ways that your body is actually trying to get your attention to say, I am unsafe, I am uncomfortable in this situation and I need you to listen to me, to pay attention to me. Substance abuse problems, I mentioned this in my previous video already, but the need to escape, the need to use substances to escape your current situation because you don't have the tools or you don't have the coping mechanisms or you, you think you don't have the knowledge on how to get out of that situation, also very common. And then, of course, you can have all kinds of health problems due to those substance abuses. The next thing that I want to talk about is the increased risk of diabetes. Again, insulin is regulated by your hor hormones. It is produced through hormones. And so when any kind of thing is off with your hormones, other organs are going to be affected inside of your body. The other thing is that a lot of people will have difficulty maintaining their weight, as I expressed earlier, not just due to hormones, but because, again, of that escapism. Some people will use food as a way to escape the situation and try to numb the pain, try to um, bury their feelings through eating. Some people will not eat, and they will force their body to figure out how it's going to get the nutrients to make more of the healthy cells that it needs. And either way, this is causing issues and can cause chronic illnesses, again, such as diabetes. You're also going to find a lot of menstrual irregularities for the women out there. The, the Everything is regulated, again, off of your hormones and the, the fluctuation of your weight. Sometimes when, when you get underweight, your body just cannot produce your normal menstrual cycle. And the same, this 
also happens if you are a normal weight, but your hormones are off. And so again, there's all kinds of reproductive health issues that cannot be only having an, an impact on you right now, but ultimately on future family planning and things of that nature. Cognitive difficulties, talked about this in my last one, and I don't want to go off too much into the mental and emotional uh, causes or effects of narcissistic abuse on, on somebody. Uh, but I do want to point out that memory issues actually can have an impact on your health because if you're forgetting to take your medications, you're forgetting to take your vitamins, you're forgetting to go to your doctor, these are all things that are going to have impacts on your physical health. And again, there's a whole host of cognitive issues. I'm not going to cover all of those. I just want to point out the fact that your memory problems are not only just going to affect you remembering what was said to you 10 minutes ago, but they can affect the way that you treat your body, the way that you care for your physical health and so forth. Another um, another problem that I already mentioned in the story about somebody who's in my intensive is the heart palpitations. Again, that's caused from stress. You can actually throw your heart out of rhythm due to the amount of stress that you're under. Think about that. Think about how much pressure you must be under. You know that they have to shock people with electricity to get their heart back into beating again when somebody flatlines. Think about how much stress you must have in order to throw your heartbeat out of rhythm. So I really want you to pay attention to once again, your body is crying out for you to pay attention to it, to give it what it needs. Vision problems are also very common because once again, everything is regulated by hormones and also by your blood flow. So your eyes are connected to your brain through your optic nerve. And basically what happens is that these nerve endings carry the light impulses that you get from looking around where it's picked up. And again, your words create your world. If you have ever said over yourself, I, I don't wanna see that ever again, or uh, you know, I wish I had never seen that or something like something along those lines, your body will start to respond to that. Not to mention your body is happy to partner with the natural words that you are speaking to make sure that you never see something like that again. And once again, once there's an issue, it's even more difficult for you to recover, for you to repair from that because your body just simply does not have the materials, does not have the regulation, does not have the consistency in order to start healing those things that are happening. We mentioned hair problems, but along with that is nail problems. If you're having issues with your hair, you're probably having issues with your nails. Either your nails are not growing, they can become paper thin. I have had clients whose nails were literally like the, the thickness of a paper. And uh, that's, again, just due to nutrient deficiencies, your body, when you are in stressful situations of any kind, but especially prolonged stressful situations, your body is not absorbing the minerals, the vitamins that it needs in order to reproduce itself, not only at all, but in a healthy manner. And so you will lose the things that you normally can take. You know, your, your body needs a, a lot of calcium and vitamin D in order to make your nails you will lose that ability because you can't absorb it. Nausea and vomiting on a regular basis. A lot of people will say um, that they have a cold or that they had the flu, but they're actually, th this wasn't caused because of a virus or some sort of germ that was in their atmosphere. This is actually the manifestation of hypervigilance of the inability to relax, of no sleep. This is how your body reacts when you are in so much lack. By the way, I had a revelation on health um, a few years ago, and just as you would, it's a debt, okay? It's a debt to your body. Just as you would, um, if you don't have enough money in your bank account and now you're overdrawn, you have a debt to pay. So before you can actually start building uh, and start taking out more money, you actually need to pay back that money. That's what's happening in a lot of people's bodies is that they are in debt to themselves. They need to provide themselves a place of consistency, a place of wholeness, of peace, 
of love ultimately. And this is uh, one of the things that can frustrate people when they're starting to recover because they think, I'm going to get out of this situation and then things are going to you know, start elevating. But actually, a lot of stuff starts rising to the top when they're out of that situation because their mind finally feels safe enough to reveal certain traumas that they had even forgotten about that they have no recollection of, but their body always remembers. And by the way, there's a great book called The Body Keeps the Score, and it is fantastic in terms of understanding the incredible memory that your body has and how miraculously you were created. So check that out too if you're interested in learning more about how your body remembers the situations that you've been through. Even if you feel you have mentally or emotionally processed a situation, you need to make sure that you have physically processed that trauma out of your body as well. And finally, I do want to talk about the exacerbation of pre-existing health conditions because it's so important that people understand if you are already sick, the narcissist is not only not going to help you, uh, th- a lot of people think, well, I think that the narcissist should have pity on me or should ha- feel bad for me because, you know, I was in this car accident and I need to get to my physical therapist or my surgery or my whatever. And I'm telling you, you are expecting a very sick person to try to act and reason like a normal, healthy person. And it's just unrealistic. It's it's having these unrealistic expectations are going to keep you in this situation longer and keep you going through this cycle more and more. And so instead, not only is the narcissist not helping you recover from that, they're actually creating an environment for that uh, situation to spread and get worse because they will not, they will still expect you to do everything that you've normally done. Pick up the kids from school, do the stuff around the house, go to work, do everything that you've normally done. They do not care if you, if you have some sort of trauma or or some sort of accident that has happened to you in your body, they're not going to help you. They're going to keep putting more on you. Once again, you are not a sovereign being to the narcissist. You are a supply source for them. And seeing you in pain actually gives them a sense of high. It gives them a sense of even more control and power over you and the situation that you're in. And so they will absolutely use that to gain all the energy that they can from it. Remember, narcissists are energy vampires. And so they will use that situation to extract more and more from you. Just like a vampire doesn't care how much blood it takes out of its victim's body. It just needs all of that blood. That's exactly what the narcissist is doing to you in terms of energy. And again, this is a very real concept. This is a spiritual issue long before it became a physical issue. And so I hope that by covering this this video and doing an in-depth of what it feels like, what the, what the narcissistic abuse that takes place chronically, like over a long period of time, um, can feel like in your body, it will awaken some of you to make a change, to shift a cycle, and to treat your body the way that you were created to to be treated, even if somebody has never shown you how that looks. Even if you don't know how to you know, love yourself or care for yourself, that you would take one step and at least try to honor the way that you were created. And again, I have some resources linked in the description of this video for you to check out. And if you're interested in joining my community, being a part of my Narcissistic Detox Intensive, I want you to text me at 512-677-9322. And if you're outside of the United States, shoot me an email. My email address is in the description of this video as well. And I will see you guys next time.